Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. A little bit late this month, but I've got a good reason. I had a break from everything, kind of. I had a little holiday, a annual leave for a couple of weeks, um, which kind of slowed down my movie watching. I consider the last month was a kind of big one. I got a lot of movies and uh, my numbers have gone up. We're jumping ahead. We'll get there at the end. Let's get through everything that I ticked up in the month of June. Um, yeah, well, let's just dive in. So we'll start off with some Vinegar Syndrome stuff. I got the China O'Brien 1 and 2 4K Blu-ray set, which, you know, it was part of the subscription. I already had it from uh, Eureka. I'm kind of torn with the Eureka one because I've got the Eureka, it's only 4K. This has the Blu-rays and the 4K. I feel like I should get rid of one. I just don't know what to do there. Uh, one I've not gone to yet. I, I don't really know why, because it's something I know I'm going to enjoy, and that is Invasion USA on 4K as well, which should be pretty fun, I would imagine. Um, the first cinematography release from uh, Vinegar Syndrome that I picked up is Red Drop West. I love this kind of modern noir film. Uh, and I've heard that this is a fantastic transfer, which I haven't gotten to as yet, but I'm looking forward to. When I picked up, it was just a kind of it was a last minute, just urge to, to, to get it. I don't know what, well, I do know why, because the name above it, Tom Savini, the Ripper. I kind of like this one, and it does get crapped on from a great height. Uh, Tom Savini in the extra just lays into it as well, which was incredibly funny. It's about a, a university, a class about horror movies. Yeah, there is a whole subplot about a ring that turns somebody into a modern day Jack the Ripper. It's kind of silly, but I kind of liked it for the most part. Yeah, I also got volume three of the Homegrown Horrors, which had Haunted Ween. Dearly Love and Revenge, which I've watched all of. I think I've reviewed two of them. Still want to do Revenge is a weird one because it is a sequel to a movie called Blood Cult that Vinegar Syndrome have just released. Now, I didn't buy Blood Cult because I'm unsure about it. Revenge was next up, fine, not great. Um, if you've seen Blood Cult, let me know if it's something I should consider picking up. Uh, the two parts set here, Criminally Insane, which people seem to love. I seem to be in the minority about this one. And Satan's Black Wedding, which I preferred. Uh, it was an interesting double pack. Uh, kind of worth checking out. Next up, we have Johnny Toe's Lifeline, which was, for Johnny Toe, average. It was nothing special. It was fine. I just, you know, it's... The filmography of Johnny Toe, there's some classics in there. I would have loved to have gotten 4K. It's fine. I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, next up, we have The Tunnel, which is a found footage movie, which I do kind of enjoy. Um, from the VSA range, we have The Instructor, which I just just didn't like at all. And it's one of those movies that I feel if, if I had watched it in a different night or a different mood that I may have enjoyed but man this thing just sucked for me um, I was urged to pick up this film simply because of the director, uh, Andrzej Zolowski directs that most important thing, love I loved the box set that Eureka released so I was eager to check this one out to see what it's going to offer, still not got it yet and uh, Vinegar Syndrome releasing the 4k set of Navy Seals which I remember enjoying but it's been a Good number of years since I revisited it and still one I need to get to. I did a review for Memories of Murder, the first kind of Curzon problem that I... I did a review for Memories of Murder and this was a fantastic movie. If you haven't checked out the review, check it out. If you haven't seen the film, you're in for a treat. This was a fantastic release. Um, really enjoyed it. There was two Second Sight films this month. The Sacrament, which again... I really enjoyed as well. Ty West movie, I felt it had some really ominous atmosphere to it. It had a really terrific finale and it's one I've been meaning to get to for a while and I just hadn't. But when I did sit down and watch it, loved it. 
Gungium Haunted Asylum is a, a movie that has been it's been rattling around my head since I watched it. I absolutely love this film. It is terrific. It is something that I am going to watch again very soon because I really enjoyed it and I want to delve more into this world. I felt it was expertly done and it's one of those movies that seems to have a kind of love-hate relationship with viewers. I thought it worked and it worked tremendously well. I love the characters, the situation, the scares. Everything about it was just oh, absolutely perfect. Never heard of it before. So glad I've seen it. Two imprint movies this month. We have uh, the Unseen and the Uninvited set uh, from Lewis Allen Films. Now, I, I really wanted to see the Uninvited, uh, Uninvited. I heard it was pretty great. And surprisingly, it was fine. I preferred the Unseen. That was a whole lot of fun for me. A very fun playground and just really enjoyable. But yeah, I got a little bit disappointed with the Uninvited. The second imprint release I got was The Man Who Haunted Himself, which was fantastic. I loved this. I had a memory of a different kind of movie. My warped memory had swapped this with something else. I wasn't expecting what I got, and I utterly loved it. Roger Moore was fantastic. Um, I don't want to give away what the movie's about. Uh, it's going to be a hard one to review. Terrific film. Next Some week of titles now, The Medical Fighters, which was a wacky uh, Wun Yu Ping film. Uh, housed monks, supernatural shenanigans, just incredibly uh, light fun, and the reviews coming soon for that. The Valiant Red Peony trilogy. Uh, part one, the review's up. Part two is done and it'll be posted soon. I've still got part three to watch. This is a great series. I really kind of enjoyed well, the first two parts anyway. I've been really kind of fun and I'm looking forward to rounding the trilogy out. The first uh, USA release I have of uh, Eureka title was Beast Fighter. I've reviewed Karate Bull Fighter and Karate Bear Fighter has just to come up. I know we were all hanging on that question I posed at the end of Karate Bull Fighter. Will he fight a bear in the second movie? I won't spoil it here. I'll let you know. There was three uh, Radiance titles I got this month. Sympathy for the Underdog. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Kinji Fukasawa movie. Uh, really easy to watch. Some great performances, violent sections as well. Just about a man coming out of jail and just kind of looking for that revenge that he's, he's after. Uh, Shrink Lao Quinn. Yeah, Argentinian film, four and a half hours, split into two movies. Mystery film, uh, I've got a lot to say about this one. So watch out for the review coming soon, I did en enjoy it. Uh, and Bandits of Orgosolo. Now, I have watched the main feature and it was fantastic, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a great tale. This one comes with a second disc uh, the Lost World, which is, I think it's 10 short films, which I am watching before I do the full review of this one, but this this was a really great film as well. And last, but not least, was a surprise. Something I'd ordered last year and completely forgot all about it until it arrived through the door, and that was The Flesh and Blood Show from 88 Films. The horror films of Pete Walker, eh, of which I'm sure I've seen one or two. Um, but I'll be checking them all out soon. As soon as I do, I will be doing reviews for all of these films. So that's everything I got in June. More than I wanted to get. Um, some real crackers in there. Let's jump over to... Um, yeah, let's jump over to Letterbox and have a look at the things I watched. So the last set I got from Imprint was the John Farrell box set. I finished off with Submarine Command, which was fine, Botany Bay, which I really kind of enjoyed, and John Farrell, The Hollywood's Man in the Shadows, which was great, because I didn't really know a great deal about this filmmaker, and having this documentary just filling me in on his unbelievably wild life was just tremendous. I then started on the Homegrown Horrors Volume 3 with Haunted Ween, Revenge and Deadly Love. As you can see, it started off fairly good and got worse as it went on. Criminally Insane, I didn't really click with at all. I will revisit that because I seem to be one of the few people that just didn't like it. 
How to Rob a Bank was a Netflix film I sat and watched with a friend one night, which was actually kind of interesting, and if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check that one out. Fascinating story of this bank robber inspired by Point Break, no less. Satan's Black Wedding was other movie on the criminally insane disc, and I preferred that a lot. I rewatched a uh, China O'Brien one and two, terrific. No Hard Feelings was another uh, Netflix kind of movie. We just wanted something to tune out at one night, and to be honest, I kind of enjoyed it. It was funny. The Johnny Toe 4K Lifeline was yeah. average. The Instructor, uh, which has a three star rating here, which that seems high. Uh, consider my thoughts on it now. The Ripper, which again people hate, even the people who made the movie hate, uh, I thought was kind of fine. No surprise there. Karate Bullfighter, I enjoyed a hell of a lot. The Man Who Wanted Himself, like I said, fantastic movie, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, the Sacrament, which is pretty good. Karate Bear Fighter, not as good as Bullfighter. Uh, Gungium Haunted Asylum, again, I, I, as I said, I adored this movie. I've been thinking about it a lot. Can't wait to revisit it. The Medical Fighters, which was a hell of a lot of fun. Memories of Murder, which was probably the best movie I watched this month. Um, and again, one I've been thinking about a lot. Red Peony Gambler 1 was a solid start to that trilogy. Sympathy for the Underdog, the Fukusaka Radiant release, was terrific. White Man was a short that was on the Memories of Murder disc. The Jewel Thief I watched uh, as I was travelling to Italy for my holidays. And it was fantastic. It was on Disney. Plus, it's uh, one of those true life documentaries. And it's almost hard to believe. Fascinating stuff. Mad Max, I watched. Um, I'd been a while since I had checked it. I got the 4Ks from HMV. And I really enjoyed that this time around. Um, Rapid Fire, I hadn't seen in a number of years. Silly, contrived. Uh, ludicrous highly entertaining uh, I watched Mad Max again because it just uh, it just clicked with me I, I absolutely adored it I wanted to see it once more uh, Kung Fu the movie was just something that just built some time I hadn't seen it before and a little bit of a Brandon Lee uh, stint and he was in that movie it was fine I've got some things to say about that one as well. Mad Max 2, uh, The Road Warrior. Again, I just love that movie. I think uh, the first two Mad Max movies are absolutely tremendous. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I've got issues with that movie. I love everything to do with Barker Town and Tina Turner and that. Everything with the kids is shoehorned in, feels wrong and just detracts from what I want in a Mad Max movie. And then I finished off the month of June with Red Peony Gambler's Obligation, which, again, I really enjoyed. Um, I will have scored it a little bit less than the first one. I think it's probably on par, and it may be the one that I prefer most out of this. Uh, my film watching at the end of the month really drops off because I was travelling, um, and it was usually just whatever I was on a train or the plane, in a boat, whatever, uh, for a long period of time, we would sit and try and watch something. So not as many watched as I would have liked. In fact, uh, I went from... Let's see. Let's see where I've got my figures. At the end of May, I had 225 to watch, and I jumped up to 237, uh, which is a bit of a shame, because I was trying to really get into it. Didn't work out for me. I will be doing better this month, uh, hopefully. Like I said, let's go into what is coming out this month and what I'm interested in. The Holy Virgin versus The Evil Dead is something that just sounds like my kind of movie. Because my watch pile is too high at the moment, it's not something I am going to get immediately, maybe further down the line. Uh, the Agitator I have sitting here, I need to start delving into it, which I probably will start today or tomorrow to get that one uh, watched. As we move through here, there are some things that, look, like, uh, Anthropophagus 
uh, and uh, there should be another one out as well. Uh, something I'm I like the films, but it's one of those ones I don't feel it needs 4K. Uh, absurd is the second one. Uh, I just don't feel it at all, but I like to support the Italian range, so maybe further down the line I'll pick them up in sales. Strip Nude for Your Killer, I absolutely 100% have picked up already. It's sitting ready to watch maybe uh, the next movie after the Agitator box set. Ah, there's Absurd there. <clears throat> so, is there anything else there? We have the Bruiser 4K, which I'm going to wait and be, probably pick up in a sale later down the line. Message from Space I will get because the Eureka stuff's pretty fun. Blowout in 4K is something I would love to get. But if the watch pile is too high, I'm just going to hold off and get it at a later date. And then end of the month, we've got Mississippi Mermaid, The Landlord, uh, more Radiance titles along with 18 Years in Prison, all things I'd be really interested in getting. Any uh, Revenge of the Blood Beast, yes, fantastic. <laughs> uh, we're getting Severin's release of Santa Sangra here as well, which is a terrific title um, and something I would strongly recommend. What personally am I going to get? Uh, I have The Agitator, I have Strip Nude for Your Colour, And then it'll be a break. Maybe some Vinegar Syndrome titles might turn up at some point this month. Uh, the Eureka title, Message from Space, and the Double Crossers I'll end up getting, and probably the Radiance titles, and that'll be it from this month. But, you know, I'd love to know what you're picking up. Um, if there's anything that just jumps out at you that you need to get. I, I thought... The Master Ask set was out at the end of this month, but it must have been pushed back to August, which is just what I'm kind of looking here, looking for, because that is something I will be getting whenever that comes out. But hey, that's my month. It's been eventful. I've had a break. I feel rejuvenated and ready to go back into my movie watching. The Agitator set is next, because Radiance titles have been exceptional this year and I really want to see the referee one it just sounds terrific especially when the Euros are on <laughs> um, yeah so I'd love to know if there's anything you picked up, anything you watched that really stood out to you let me know in the comment box below any thoughts on anything I picked up uh, as well just drop a comment down there so we can get some interaction and pretend I've got friends as always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff. In the description box below are links to Patreon, membership program, and manvfilm.com always, in which you can support me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.